Hello, in this example I'm going to create a sign for a pub called the Green Tree. I'll open a new model, change the resolution down to about 2000. The height I'll change to 600 and the width I'll change to 500 and OK that. going to create a rectangle which is the same size as my layout so 500 width by 600 height and I'll F9 that to move it to the center create another rectangle here with a width of 50 and a height of 25 not bothered about the position of that one and I'll zoom in on it select it select this icon for node editing here we have two new options maintain smooth curves display virtual midpoints I'll just remove this span at the bottom by pressing R and I want to create a jagged polyline so I'll move this node down there and instead of making new nodes I'm going to select the virtual midpoints so if I just grab the midpoint and move it it will turn it into a node so I'll do the same there and just keep on doing it so I get something that I like let's move this up and move that one and move this one down that should do That's what I'm going to use as a profile now when I use my contour blend tool. This is a new tool within ArtCam 2011. So I'll select contour blend. I'll select selected vector. I'm going to select this as the profile and set profile vector. Change the mode to add as I want it to be proud. And select the outside rectangle as my path. What this is going to do is create an edge around this sign which will make it stand out. So if I create shape and then close my contour blend and go into the 3D view and I've created this shape, a feature on the outside of the sign. The contour blend would follow any pattern that I put here. I could have put rads on these points and then it would have gave the same effect when it created the relief. So there we basically have the base for the sign. So I'll go back onto 2D layer and here on the bitmaps I want to import an image and I'll select this bent tree. You can see it's opened up and it's lots of colours. So I'll select bitmap to vector. Just move that over here. Zoom in on the tree and click reduce colours. And I'll change that down to two. And OK that. So now we have two colours. I want to make sure that this green one is the primary one. So I'll left click on the green one, right click on the white one so it switches them around. The speckle size, I'll keep that at 2 and the smoothness I'll keep that at 1 and create vector. Now if I zoom in on this tree, I know here, just take the bitmap off, I know here there's a loop. See where it intersects there? So I'm going to use my vector doctor tool and click vector intersections and identify and it will give me two markers here and here which shows where it's intersecting so if I click here under fixed problems remove vector loops and then click fix problems what it would do it will trim off parts that are intersecting so now I have no intersection points on this quite complex vector so I'll close vector doctor it will ask me if I want to keep these red markers 
and I'll select no. I'll zoom back out. I'm now going to create a circle diameter 300 and F9 that to center it. Now select these vectors on the inside. I want those to be scaled up until they hit this circle. So I'll go on to transform and I'll press shift and alt instead of using the slider bar and that will scale it up around the center point. I want the midpoint of the trunk to intersect the circle. Now I'll select both the tree and the circle and I'll move those up. I'll press Alt and then just move up. It keeps it in orthographic mode in 90 degrees. Select it there and I double click on the circle and I'm going to create a recessed dome at minus 10 degrees. What I'm going to do is V carve the tree and then project the 2D V carving into this recessed dome. So I'll close the shape editor, I'll go into 3D view, and you can see that it's created a recessed dome. I'll open up my reliefs and this particular relief layer I'm going to rename that pub sign as I'm going to use this later. I'll create a new layer so I'll right click on front relief and select new layer or I could select front relief and here we now have new icons I could click new relief layer and then right click on that and rename it and I'll call that green tree. Now I'm going to create the text for the sign. I'll select my pub sign relief which will show me the relief layer and I will know where to put my text. I'll select the text tool Here we have Old London. This is a file that's included in this tutorial. What you will need to do is find the installation. So if I right click on the properties of ArtCam and open File Location. The file location is under My Computer, Local Disk C, Program Files and ArtCam 2011. If I click on ArtCam 2011, here we have a fonts folder. I open that and then you can just drag the old London font into there and it will open up on here. So I'll select old London and 104 points, 15% of space and select on the 2D view and I'll type in the and click done and I'll create some more text here I'll change the height of that to 215 and the character space not I'll call that green tree and then click done I'll press F9 to center the green tree press alt and then move it down about there I'll zoom in on this I want the aligned with green tree so I'll select the and then shift select green tree this menu here the drop down I can select align left so that will align it to the left just select that and with the arrow keys just move it up just a touch and then zoom back out. I'll go back onto green tree. Now I want to show you how the text would turn out if I were to use shape editor. So turn on my vectors 
and I'll double click green tree. If I select here on the rule, it will give me increments of 15 degrees. I'll come down to 45 degrees, minus, as I want this dropped into the sign, and then click add. I'll close my shape editor and turn off my vectors. If I zoom in on the G, you can see here it's gouged into the side wall of the font. Although this is not really seen that much, it's still a bit of a problem. So I'll undo my shape editor and this time I'm going to use contour blend. I'll shift select the as well and select contour blend. Instead of selected vector this time I'm going to use linear and preserve interior corners so there's no rads. The angle is 45 degrees. Instead of add I want to subtract it and then create shape. This will produce exactly the same outcome except it will not have the gouge marks in there. So if I zoom in, that's a lot better. And it's a lot crisper the font is. There we have the text for the sign. Now I'm going to machine the sign. I'm going to create what we call the texture toolpath which is going to create a texture all along this flat face. So select the outside rectangle and I'm going to offset this 50mm as I know that this profile was 50mm wide and that's where the flat starts. So offset it 50mm, I don't want to delete original vectors this time and offset. So there we have a new rectangle which is our boundary for the texture relief. I'm also going to select the circle as I don't want the texture to go inside this relief. So if I click toolpaths and then select this icon which is create texture toolpath just tab this onto the project and instead of whole model I need to change this to selected vectors. The tool I'm going to select is if I come down to woodworking tools, select a 12mm ball nose and I'll select the default values from tool except I'll change the depth to 1mm on the minimum and 1.8 maximum finish depth. You can also change patterns using vectors but this is just a basic texture here and I'll click to define the material. The material's already set up and I'll just OK that. That's created the material block and I'll rename that to texture and calculate now. That's created the texture all over that flat plane so I'll close the texture toolpath and I'll just simulate this I'll just simulate the bottom of it so you can see what it's going to produce. So it's using the 12mm ball nose to create the texture. There you can see. I'll just escape that. And I'll delete the simulation. Because the texture toolpath has taken off a maximum of 1.8mm when going to machine green tree text, it's going to be 1.8mm shallow. So I need to add at least 1.8mm onto this text. So I need to drop it by that much. So I'll select green tree and the vectors and I'll double click on them to open up my shape editor and I'll select a flat plane minus 2mm and then add that what this does, it drops a flat wall down by 2mm. So I'll zoom back out of there. Now I'm going to do a machine relief to create the outside feature and to rough out the green tree and machine the recessed dome in the middle. So I'll select tool paths and I'll select create machine relief tool path. 
going back onto my 2D view and select the outside rectangle and the inside rectangle, select all of my text and select the circle. These are all my boundary points because I don't want to be machining the flat plane as it would just be a waste of time. Instead of whole relief, I'll select selected vectors, go back onto my 3D view, inside vector, finishing options, I'm going to use a 3mm ball end with a step over of 0.1. So I'll click on that drop down menu and change the step over to 0.1. Tool clearance strategy, I'll keep that as raster and roughing options, I'm going to use a, quite a large cutter for this just to blast it away. Use a 16mm and change step down to 5mm just to make sure that it clears a bit out within this recessed dome. The material thickness is already set up and I'll click calculate now. That's created the roughing. It's just calculating the finishing tool paths. And there we have the finished tool paths. I'll just turn off this tool path so I can see. And now I'm going to do a bit of V bit carving to machine this tree. So I'll go back onto my 2D view and I'll draw the box around the tree. Go back onto my 3D view and select VBit Carving. Selected vectors and I'll select the carving tool as 32mm 130 degrees. Here it will calculate the maximum depth the tool can get into and I'll click calculate now close my VBIT carving and I'll just zoom in on here as you can see this tool path is on the zero plane but I need it to be projected onto this recessed dome so the way that we get around this is to select my VBIT carving tool and click transform tool paths make sure that the VBIT is selected there and click project tool what this will do it will project it onto a 3D relief so I'll click project on relief as you can see there the VBIT carving has dropped onto this dome so I'll close that and now I'm going to do another bit of VBIT carving just to go along this circle here but I'm going to use a profile toolpath and select along select my profiling tool I'm going to use quite a large angled VBIT here so I use a 32mm 150 degree the finished depth I'm going to change that to 3mm and I'll select calculate now that's created a profile along that circle I'll close this profile and now I'm going to go on to machine relief just to create this text instead of a whole relief I'll select vectors and I'll select the text shift select that finishing options I'm going to use an engraving bit for this and I'm going to use a 0.125 flat 10 degrees. Select that and I'm going to change the step down to 0.05 just so it creates the detail within the text and I'll select calculate now.
there we have the finished toolpath so I'll close that and I need to do a profile on the outside edge to cut it out so I'll select create profile toolpath and keep it at outside selected vectors that's correct profiling tool I'm going to use a large cutter for this I use that same 16mm that we used to rough out step down leave that at 13 so it cuts in only two passes and then calculate now so I'll close that and that is our green tree finished so I'll just turn off all the tool paths and preview it for you so simulate all tool paths this will take a little while there we have a finished sign for the pub the green tree another thing that we can do is to add a different material to this 
to make it look a bit more realistic. So change it to say medium oak vertical and apply that and looks a bit more realistic. There we have our green tree side. The only thing left to do now is to go here and open the relief clip art library and I'll come down to signs and select the pub sign and drag that into signs and it will create a new bit of clip art for that particular layer which just has our sign. So in the next example I'm going to show you how to change this sign using a new feature called cookie cutter. Thanks for watching. Bye.